In just a few minutes, you're going to become a master of these types of problems. Whenever the question asks you about something and all the answers are y equals, then you're going to be able to use our good friend, the calculator. Because there's a button on there called table, and that'll give you y equals. And you can type these in one at a time until you find out which of these passes through both of these points here. So let's see what that process looks like. Okay, once again, we'll hit table, and then we're going to clear. And we're going to type in A here, so we'll, we'll get that fraction if we hit that button right there. Then we'll do 1 down 2. You'll need to get out of the fraction, so you'll hit that right arrow. Then we want an x, and that's next to 4 right there. Then we have a minus 4 at the end, so we'll hit that. And we're ready to go. From here, you're just going to hit enter five times. It seems excessive. But one, two, three, four, five, when we do that, you get a table of values. Then we want to see if we go through this point first. Zero is x, four is y. So notice that's the x column. We're just going to scroll up to x is 0. But when we do that, we get 0, negative 4. We want 0, positive 4. So unfortunately, it's not a. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we're going to continue process of elimination till we find which one goes through both of those points. So let's go back. Let's hit table, clear. And let's do the next one here. So we got negative. When there's a minus in the beginning, it's always going to be that white button there. Then 2x plus 4. We're good. Enter five times. And right away, this one does pass through 0, 4 right there. So that's great. But we do want to check when x is 6 if it goes through that 1. But it doesn't. Y is negative 8 instead, so unfortunately it was closer, but it's not B. So we're hoping it's C, because you get the process, it's just tedious, so we're hoping that's it. Now this one has a combination of things. It's still got the negative, so we'll use that. But it also has the fraction, we'll use that. Okay, get out of there. Got our X, we got our plus 4, and we're ready to rumble. Let's see if it's C. Okay, if we sneak down just a little bit, when x is 6, y is 1, so it goes through that point. Now let's double check when x is 0, and beautiful, x is 0, y is 4, goes through both points, so it's definitely C. And that's it. So these problems can go from a nightmare to the ones that you're like, ooh, I want one of those very quickly here. Let's look at some other examples. Another way that they could ask this question is giving you the slope. Now, when they tell you what the slope is, that's the number in front of x. Because we have a negative 5 slope, it's not a or b, because those are both positive. So let's get rid of those two. So it could either be c or d. So at this point, at least it's a 50-50, so we could just try one of these and see if that works. So let's try C here. Okay, table, clear. We got our negative 5, x, then that minus 5. If it's in the middle, you're going to use that minus on the right side. If it's in the beginning, you'll use that white negative down there. Okay, we're good. We'll hit enter five times. And we want to see when x is 3 is y negative 10. Scroll down. 3, negative 20, no good. So it's not c, it's definitely d. However, we don't have to type that whole thing in because they're almost identical. It's just the minus turned into a plus. So you could hit table and then hover over that minus and then just make it a plus like that. There we go. So. Let's see. There it is. 3, negative 10. It's definitely D. So we just wanted to double check it. Trust, but verify. 
Okay, feel free if you want to practice with this one. It looks a little intimidating, but even if there's fractions there, just trust the process, you got it. And assuming you have, you would have noticed it's not A, but it is B. Let's double check it. So table, clear. Okay, start off with 3 over 4. Then our x. Then plus another fraction, 7 over 4. We got b. Let's do it. Okay, to get to negative 5 this time, we actually have to keep hitting the up arrow. And there we go, negative 5, negative 2, so that point's good. Then, when x is 3, is y 4? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, bingo. So it passes through both points, beautiful. The fractions, no problem. And then a final way that they could ask these types of questions. They could give you the table of values, but it's still the same thing. We see y equals. We know, okay, we could just go ahead and use the table, try them all out. Same thing, that one's going to be A right there. But they could give you a final style of question here that doesn't have a Y equals. Notice all these other ones, we could use the table, because when you hit the table, it gives you Y equals. But for this last one here, they might mix things up. They might have X's and Y's all jumbled together. So the approach for this one is substitution. When they give you an answer that, that has parentheses, that's the point. We're going to change x to 3. We're going to change the y to 2. So it's going to be 3 times 3 plus 2 times that y value of 2. And we'll see if it equals 10. Let's try it out. 3 times 3 plus 2 times 2. Oops, except we don't want to do it in the table. So let's clear, let's do it on the home screen. Let's try that again. It's three, two times two. But that gets us 13. And we're looking for 10, so obviously it's not A there. So now we're gonna go ahead and change X to two, and then Y is still two as well. So let's do it. So three times X is two this time plus 2 times y is 2, and bingo, that gets us 10, so it's b. So between these two methods, you'll definitely be able to solve any equation of line on the GED problem. Huge shout out to the table button, of course, and hopefully these problems go from a nightmare to ones that you're happy to see on the test. Let me know what questions you have, but you got these. Good luck. We'll see you in the next video. Toodles.